cool let's get started all right so let's see we were here we were here on Wednesday right and it was pretty much a make it or break it point because you're in quote unquote resistance you're in quote unquote supply you're in quote unquote uh, whatever right so I wanted to see if this was gonna fully break out which it still can or if this breaks down beneath equilibrium right if this fully trades below equilibrium let's say back into this range here then this will more than likely fall down right and that's me pretty much I'm not essentially predicting price but I just want to an if and then type of thing so if we do break full equilibrium range and we approach a pretty much discounted market um, due to how close these recent lows are if we reach close to these lows we'll more than likely see this take out those lows but if we manage to stay above equilibrium which is exactly what I want right you're still looking at this entire daily efficiency here All right so there's still a possibility of it you know doing something there Let's see. There. So I'm pretty much just waiting to see if this is going to want to reject anywhere in this relative area, right? Which is even why I even took the, the small risk because I was trying to see if this would have been a pretty cool closure and pretty much look something like this. That's what I was anticipating. Obviously, I didn't get it. So it's just like. I'm out of the trade. It, it wasn't really, it's whatever it's Friday. Um, the weird thing is, is that literally this last push down happened like two minutes before, uh, market closed as you can see. So I don't like that. I don't like that. It did that because it gave a pretty nasty H4 closure. It gave a pretty nasty daily closure. So in theory, we should anticipate this weekly low to be taken. I mean, not weekly low, this um, this daily low. That's what I'm anticipating. Seeing that this break to that then, we can get a setup and then get a very good daily closure. I want to see something like this. Like I said before, anything like this, right? Or an inverted version of this, right? It's just, it's all about the closures because now based off this closure alone, there's the possibility that this will continue because all this is representing to me is mid-size volume right followed by rejection of whatever you want to call this right obviously there was a three minute play here i believe i don't i don't i didn't really check it out um but i mean we can check it out right now just to see uh let's see let's see hold on hold on guys hold on Sorry guys, um, let's see. So I think, <clears throat> right, there was a play here, right? Remember when we spoke on call, we were anticipating that I wouldn't wanna, I wouldn't have wanted to see these lows break or else we'd see price start to retrace down, right? So the move happened here and it took out high meeting target and then this is what played off of a previous move over here so this is i'm pretty sure it was a three minute um i think i saw somebody catch it as well yeah it was see right here pretty big range right and then you could have easily played any type of Right, we're approaching area of interest. Let's see. Uh, right, well, for one, we're in our we're in our selected time of day. We're in in the seven to ten a.m. span, which is the overlap session. So, 
we approach area of interest here, right? We obviously want to wait and see what happens, right? But you essentially get, I'm pretty sure you can see this better on the seconds time frames. Let's see. Right, so applying logic here, right? The first thing I notice, starting from left to right, is this. First thing I notice is the sudden impulse and volume, right? What does that mean? That means that this is potentially a buying climax, right? So high volume means something is reaching and it's maybe inclining people to want to sell or whatever, right? Just by one last push up. And then we got our automatic rally. We got an up thrust, right? Unfortunately, no UTAD. So you could have played the, I'm sorry, the, the up thrust. And this would have been your LPSY one, right? The cool thing after that, that would have been really pretty unrealistic because you're essentially still guessing a low unless you're really good with understanding volume because you can see here that there's a diminishment in volume, right? So that would have been valid to play. Um, but you could have been more conservative here right with the break of structure right and then the return the return to premium and then that's the sell off right so pretty pretty solid um you could have easily used this entire candle here right very very textbook and was that 50% of that? Can yeah, it was to the T and then your stop would have been just above that. So any way you would have entered that, that would have been fine. But obviously the key there was that break of structure, break of structure plus time of day plus zone of interest plus whatever you want to call that key level, whatever. That's, that's enough confluence for me to want to take that trade. Obviously this was a day that I was actually, I didn't trade because I was busy with school stuff. So I didn't really catch it um i did see it afterwards but that's fine um but now let me show you guys why i took the buy from equilibrium right so like i was saying before right just basing dxy and eu right this is the equilibrium of range Equilibrium of range right there. Uh, the fuck, why is this? This is also another POI here. Right, so me personally, I have that equilibrium of range marked and then I have this 50% marked. That never hit, it probably will hit. And the reason why I'm saying that is because look at how this is reacting. Right, look at how this is reacting. This now broke structure here. So this looks like it would really wanna continue. And not to mention low, higher low, I mean lower high, lower high, lower high lower high fail to meet this high unfortunately so as soon as we break this low if that low breaks then you will see price eventually hit that 50 percent of inefficiency there but the reason why i took it here i'm going to show you guys that was actually pretty neat so i was anticipating some type of bullish move during all of this during this whole whatever this is this little range um and pretty much what I was playing based off of, right, was my time of day. Seven to 10. Cool, 
that was this was my window of opportunity right and something i've caught on to over the past couple months was that if a move gives you an option at 959 then i would take it because it would usually give some type of reaction because it's still it still meets the the time requirements and that's something that i've messed up on like i would stop trading like at 945 and it's just like i would miss like moves like every once in a while and that was just that's what i what i pretty much reasoned to myself as to why it would happen and the cool thing here was i was reading this right no break of structure right no break of structure no break of structure right and then we had strong volume here so it wasn't really the prettiest trade ever i was looking at it i'm pretty sure 30 second sc here Yeah, I was pl I was trying to play this and I was waiting to see if we were going to get something. I used the whole candle. And so I was waiting to see if something was going to happen here. So price reaches time of day, price reaches area of interest, right? And this was actually the minute closure here and that was extremely bearish on so pretty strong volume. So I said, "You know what? No, I'm I'm good. I'm waiting." I don't want to see this. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't want to just throw away risk like that. So, and as you can see, this actually went back to fill inefficiency here. This filled inefficiency here, and then continued lower. Right. So now, this is my low taken out. Right. This is my low taken out, and usually. When I'm thinking like this, all right, we just took out, wait, quote unquote, ran stops. We just quote unquote took out, right, the sell of liquidity on this side. So I'm expecting a reaction to the upside now that that's happened because that task is now accomplished. I just need an excuse to take that risk. Oh, I don't know what happened. Yo, what the? What is that? What the fuck? I don't know what just happened. Um. So this is my focus point, right? Me anticipating that reaction to at least give me the entry and give me enough time to take, to take a, not just the partial, but to at least, bro, what is wrong with my mouse? I don't know what's going on guys, my bad. Um, but yeah, so we're here. gonna highlight this low All right and I actually took this from here okay we'll go we'll come back to the one second but five second here All right we just took out that low so now i'm looking for an excuse right so what do we see we see this happen right so what happens in here we cannot fully see not even on a line chart, line chart i believe yeah not really it's a little bit better but it's not not as good but anyways right what i was noticing here right was straight up diminishment of volume Right, I saw diminishment of volume approaching here. Right, we saw optimism shown. Optimism shown, reaction given, no follow through, it continued lower. But now that it's continuing lower, there is no volume supporting it. Right, cool. So I'm not going to take that risk just yet because I want to see, or I want to have a placement for my stop loss, you know? I don't want to just guess that low. So, dude, what is happening? What the fuck? I don't know why that's doing that. That's actually pretty annoying. Anyways. Right here. I was waiting, 
right? As you can see, there's the diminishment of volume, present here, optimism, and then the last bearish move, no supporting volume, right? Now we see true optimism shown here, right? We get a bullish reaction, but we're still in the range. So now I'm in the, under the impression that there is some type of accumulation going on inside because of what's happening to the volume shifting. Volume shifting means momentum is shifting, momentum is shifting, we could get a reaction to the upside. And if I have my position in, the reaction will be good enough for me to take my, um, what's it called, to take, you know, my position to break even. And so cool, we saw that optimism. And then last here, you could even consider this an SE move. Right, you see that happen, right? Volume is now strong, but nothing is happening. And now it's reacting to the upside, 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 right? And now that I see this starting to gain, gain volume around here, that's when I took my position. I think it took it anywhere around these, like here. And it was a stop. Right, a bit below the low. My position was a little bit better than that. We just do 1.5 there. And obviously we're aiming for previous highs, which are obviously here and here. Right, so that first target was met. Eventually it was met. Right, that first initial target from this time frame, right? You could consider this a high, but this high was formed after the entry. Right, so this high isn't really as relevant to me as this high because now I know that if we break this high, there's a high probability that it'll reach this high. Unless obviously structure breaks, which it did here. Right, broke structure, whatever I see there, there, higher low, higher low. I mean lower high, lower high, and then now it looks like it wants to come down. But the cool thing was, was profits were already secured and, you know, there was no, there was no worries, right? That's an 11 to 1. Um, took, a t took some time. It did take a, a, about four hours, right? But that's fine. You know, it happens. It's fine. And so, yeah, that was pretty much that trade. Um, I want to see what happens with market open. Just because I want to see where this opens up, if this wants to reject previous inefficiency here, or it's going to break it and then hit that 50% inefficiency that was below here. So, yeah, I'm probably, I, and not to mention Monday is Memorial Day, so it's like nothing's going to happen on Monday. So, this next week might be pretty, pretty rough, pretty ugly. What's an SE? What's an SE? What's an SE? Oh, I mean, yeah, you could, yeah, you could have easily placed something there. Let's see. So yeah, so this candle takes out previous liquidity, that previous high there. We go to 30 second, All right? Cool, as you can see, that's the candle that took it out. And then price came back, All right? Stop is there, cool. We now have broken structure here. So this, is, this would be break even already, but let's see how big this range is. One and a half pips, yeah. That would have been your SC, not the actual, not not this, not this itself. Yeah, that would have been a 30 second. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, Let's see. I mean, that's pretty much all for that. And then also what we were talking about in the group, right? I know I said this, let's see.
not gonna play the video. All right, I have the answer right here. I knew I wrote it down. All right, something I didn't add here or something that I just forgot was acknowledging the fact that accumulation is at the bottom of a range. Good example is right over here. This is a great example, right? This happened. This happened, Accum right, downside movement, accumulation occurs, and then rallies. And when I say it doesn't come back, that's in theory, obviously, because this is an H1 accumulation, we have to wait for something to pretty much happen, right? So reaccumulation, I mean, accumulation, reaccumulation, and a, an ugly form of distribution, but on DXY, that was actually <clears throat> an accumulation here. Right, so that was like pretty much an entire cycle in one run, right? Accumulation, I mean, yeah, accumulation, reaccumulation, distribution, right? Redistribution, markdown, right? So that's an entire cycle there, right? So obviously price came back, but that's after the cycle had already completed and the cycle had already shifted because we already had the distribution occur and we already had the reaccumulation occur as well. So that's what I mean by like with in theory. Guys, all right, give me a minute, give me a minute, guys. Hold on. My bad, my bad. What's the indicator of the highest time sessions? This is the one that uh, the boy Paul posted. Right, so this is that's the TSI. It was just, I believe it was just TSI on on the indicator section. Let's see. Yeah, this one right here. And then there's one that uh, Abraham put. I don't, I haven't, I haven't looked that one up. Maybe you can show it to me. It was. Pretty sure it was like, let me see what it was called. <coughs> I forgot, let me see. If Abraham is on the call, can he, can you show us which one it was, bro? Let's see, is he on the call? No, he's not. Um, let's see. It was called trading session something, something. I'm gonna be so annoyed if I don't find it now, so I have to find it. Yeah, it's called time zone. I don't know if it's this one. Yeah, but you see how you edit this, inputs, right? And you put your session, for me, seven. Seven to ten, and then that's it. And you can hide the TSI, and as you can see, this now highlights everything from I think from those sessions. Is it? Oh no, I did the times wrong. So it'll be eight. Eight to I'm pretty sure it's eleven. Yeah, so from 8 to 11, that's what I have to put for here. 8 to 11, and which is 7 to 10, my time.
Yeah, so it's called, you can either use time zone or you can use TSI. It's the same thing. The same thing. Yeah, but yeah, that 7 to 10 is overlap. It's pretty cool. It's like a it's like a cool little reference. That's pretty much it, though. I mean, I don't really like having that on my screen. Um, it's just good to know to have it on while you're trading to see when you need to stop. So you can put this for like your trading hours or you could have literally TSI. You can have that for the sessions and then you can have time zone for the hours that you trade right maybe you trade a little bit beyond overlap or a little bit before overlap so you can you can pretty much use both to highlight you know the overlap session and then to also highlight when you trade so it's i mean it's pretty cool it's a cool little reference it's not the end of the world if you don't use it But yeah, that's, I mean, it's pretty cool. I like it. But yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much, that's pretty much my rant for today. I don't, I don't have much else to say. Could you check out UCAT? Oh yeah, you told me to do that. I mean, I'm not going to give you a bias because it's going to take me a couple of minutes to It'll take me like 30 minutes to an hour to fully break this down from like the monthly and yearly. Still looks bullish to me in terms of macro. Uh, six months, three months, two months, monthly. Actually, yeah, it's looking iffy. But the, the thing to acknowledge here. Right, you have equal highs. Equal highs. Have we touched back previous high? No, we haven't. Hmm. No, I mean this is still this still looks pretty bullish, man. What's giving it away to me is obviously here. Consistent higher lows. Let's see. I don't know what you want me to see or what you, I don't, I don't, I really don't know what you want me to do with this. Yeah, this looks bullish, man. Looks bullish. Just depends if, obviously, if these lows are like straight up broken, then yeah, you're going to see this retrace. You'll probably see this fail as well if those lows break. The narrative still seems like it's to the upside. H1 efficiency. Nah, I wouldn't consider that an efficiency fill, bro. It went too deep. Something is in this candle here. Right? So let's let's break this down. You see a previous low here. Right? You see how this was pretty much it took out the low and then reacted? That's what I was thinking with that EU play. What I was showing y'all. This uh with this right here that this to get a low just to then take liquidity up to the to then take out previous highs so that happened here on h4 right so essentially what i would have done to try to play anything here all right mindful i'm not aware of of um of all the view cats Pretty much its behaviors its tendencies i'm not aware of them anymore since i don't trade the pair anymore but like for example for eu i would have looked for something in this candle right because let's see yeah something in that candle for sure right because you see how prices react reacted from the inside of the wick so now i have to find whatever's inside this wick to have used to project this move Yeah, and I already, I already saw this looking sloppy. Yeah, see here? It's catching my eyes here already. Because these lows took out that previous low. That's what's attracting me now. Could have been here, or it could have been here.
cool so there's nothing there nothing is showing so when that's the case <coughs> I'll just use this whole candle here this would have been my candle of interest do y'all see why I'm choosing this candle do y'all see why I'm choosing this one because I broke it down from h4 and then narrowed it down the candles that are interesting me which was the, pretty much this whole range here in the 45 minute that or the 30 minute I think that was what's attracting me now I narrowed it down to that candle do y'all see why I chose that candle Not necessarily a liquidity grab, but I'm just thinking, right? So the this low right here, I mean this low, this candle here. This candle here, right, is the one that took out these lows here. That means it took out some type of liquidity, so it has some type of volume behind it. So we now have this low that could have been pretty much used to mitigate whatever's on here and then now this candle is the one that mitigated something here but notice it never came back to that candle so that's why i'm using that candle so hopefully i'm right here hopefully i'm not sounding stupid but let's see okay well it went beyond that anyways that doesn't matter i don't i don't really want to take the time to do that but what you have to do, how, this is how I pretty much learned all of this, is looking inside the candle, seeing why it happened, right? Noting why it happened, and then that's where that happened. So I don't, I'm not gonna take the time for that. I'm, I really don't wanna do that right now. Um, but as you can see now, right, that broke structure. So now you have to find a re-entry anywhere from there to then take higher with targets meeting previous high and then obviously you could even target swing highs over here so I mean I don't really know what you wanted me to do with this but that kind of frustrated me now so now I kind of really want to figure out why what candle that was I usually never that kind of bothers me now I really need to go find it now uh, let me see this is pretty, this is fucking bothering me now. Okay, so I was, I was acknowledging these wicks, but I wasn't acknowledging these wicks. Okay, that's why I messed up. Oh yeah, so I was too focused on these wicks. That's my bad. I was just supposed to be focused on these wicks. <coughs> All right, but it's the same principle. All right now you see it here, twenty minute. I'm gonna take everything out. Let's see, twenty minute. I see. Sitting below these lows, right? And if this breaks, then it'll probably take out this low. So this is a how big of a range. All right, so if this isn't the candle, then I'm going to be extremely bothered if it's not the candle. Where's my... Boom. There it fucking is. There it is. Yeah, so, right, you see this. This happened, right? This came in. This reacted. And, right, this came in during our, pretty much our trading hours. And it didn't react, but it reacted afterwards. Right, and this is pretty much the why I would like this is a good example of why I only trade my sessions. Right, notice this move happened after the optimal time and it gave the reaction. But then notice the next day during the hours it came back and it gave the perfect entry. Right. So if you would have broken this candle down, right, whatever you would have seen here, maybe see fifteen minute, one minute, right, before you even see the inefficiency fill there. All right zoom in zoom in right this is now an sc here All right indecisions here
right so when we're seeing this right there's two points of interest to me that is this I see there and then my other point of interest is this candle here open close those are my two POIs because I know that the reaction started here where this pushed down and then pushed up that means something happened there and the the nature of what caused that was whatever it is with a one second play whatever but this candle is showing me that it pushed down then to push up so there's something in this candle so I'm just gonna use that whole candle I don't really um, I don't want to go in depth on that on the seconds on that it's just to show you references but right the two POIs are present there All right so you would have hit your first one hit your first one literally to the T at 50% right as you can see there I'm gonna make this one a different color just to show you Right, so this reacted 50% to the T, and it pretty much uh, tested structure. I wouldn't consider that fully broke structure, right? But then that obviously came back, and it came back for the real candle, which is the blue candle, right? So a lot of people would have seen that whatever, was that one minute? I think it was one minute. But a lot of people would have seen that one minute and pretty much not looked at that second candle, which is the blue zone. And the blue zone was the optimal entry, as you can see there. So that's how I pretty much when I was first like coming up with the with the rules and all that that I had to study all of this for hours, days, weeks. The blue zone was on yeah, the blue zone was the hammer, yeah. Let me show you. Oh, this is actually pretty annoying. Yeah, see that? See that? Like, do y'all see? Do y'all acknowledge why I chose that candle? Okay, so this is the first play. All right, this is the second play. All right, and I'm not even I'm not even acknowledging the second time frame, which I could. Uh, let's see. Oh, that was you, Gad. first candle and then this was the second candle all right the pricing is different since it's a since it's forex.com and not fxcm but still the same things apply but since we're on fxcm we're going to use fxcm Damn, this is starting to get boring. I'm sorry, guys. This is starting to get really boring.
cool so we didn't even acknowledge the seconds time frames here all right so this would have been your first optimal point of entry there all right and obviously this one minute here still isn't showing us nothing which was this here What sucks about seconds time frames is that you can't edit them. You can't add any seconds time frames. See, so like, even though we know that there's a, an SE inside the candle, we can't see it because we're restricted to how many seconds time frames we can see, and we can't even add any seconds time frame. Right, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months range. Whoa, that's a coincidence, low key. I mean, if you think about it, but. As you can see, we can't find the SC, but we know there's an SC in there because of the characteristic that it's showing. So, right, that would have been a zone of interest one, zone of interest two, Yeah, cool. So you see how that inefficiency fell from 30 second there, reacted to the T, and then, right, did it fail to break structure, came back, created higher low, but then fell to fully break structure here, and then that's what caused the move back down to the red zone. And I think that did the red zone come up from 50% too? It sure did, yeah. So you see it perfect to the T there. So that would have been that entry. Cool, from there you're targeting these highs. All right, that's that's already like what a 50 to one? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a very good trade. I mean this is looking bullish, bro. Straight up, this is looking bullish. Right, not only the fact that there's structure here, right, there's even an efficiency here. An efficiency here, structure there. Um, yes, we did break structure here, right, but that structure break is necessary for it to rec to pretty much give a pullback to the to then you know obviously move up higher. I mean, this is also, this right here reacted from inefficiency there too, technically. But yeah, man, this is still looking bullish. Yeah, it's still looking bullish. Actually, that didn't react from inefficiency. That reacted from something in this candle. Which, which top? What are you talking about? Are you talking about, did you sell it? Is that what you're telling me? Okay, so you sold it from here. From here. Okay, cool. Yeah, I see that. Uh, that's it. I see that. Good reaction, but I'm still acknowledging the fact that this is a structure break. So me, if there is a structure break here, then that move up. But it's also weird because you're you're playing this as a as a lower low to then continue structure. So I see why you're doing that, right? But I'm more so just basing that more off of the higher time frame where this still looks bullish. That's why I haven't been selling EURUSD, even though EURUSD presented a bunch of sell opportunities. I haven't been selling it because of what my my higher time frame bias is. So the same thing would apply here. I would be buying it. No, not a bad trade though. You got a reaction. You're you're up. That's fine. As long as you acknowledge your risk and you manage it, then you're fine. Forty pips. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all, bro. Yeah, I went up for sixty. That's not bad at all. Could have even targeted these lows here. Not bad at all. Mm 
but yeah, I do I, I, I do see this continuing lower intraday, but this is obviously your your main focal point to pretty much pay attention to and see if it reacts from here, breaks, or just breaks it. 50% of what? I'm talking about this. Nice, not bad at all. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah, it's a great trade, bro. I'm not gonna lie, it's a good trade. Followed your rules. Even gave you a nice little break of structure there. Yeah, what do you mean if it's valid? If it worked out, then it's valid, bro. It's <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, yeah, it's solid. Yeah, good trade. What I like that it did is is that break of structure. That's what I really like that it did. All right, so you see here, we had the high reach there. Uh, bullish volume was peaked, right? Then the react, the recover after the reaction, that has zero volume following it, as you can see. So yeah, that was really nice. That was really nice. See, and you can see here, break of structure, and then inefficiency fill to that previous low here. Right, hit to the T, continuation. All right, so you can see that there. Right, notice that this is the wick that pushed up to meet that inefficiency. So I'm pretty sure there's something in that wick. Right, so price has to come back to recover to it and then continue lower. So you see it all it all fits in. It all like it makes sense. Right, you see it here, right? The push up and down. Yeah, see. Not the not the prettiest. Two minute. Yeah, solid. Yeah, fifty percent there, solid. How wide was that? That stop wasn't big at all either. Yeah, two pips. That's great. Two pips on UCAD. That's very very good. Cause I know UCAD shits out a lot of pips. Or well, they can. Right. So just imagine catching two pip stops. 40 pips and then 25 here and then 50 yeah pretty good very good that's a good trade um you better have that in your journal Yeah, I got a lot of, uh, I got a, I got a, like a good amount of, um, what's it called? A good amount of, uh, journals this week. So I'm probably gonna take the time today to, to just read them, read them all and, and respond. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, the people that, that are still new, don't worry about that just yet. Like I said, I, I want you to be at least a month in to get settled in and, and understand everything before you start sending me journals. Not saying that you shouldn't be journaling already, but yeah. Oh, and do y'all get like why I ask you, like why I use this as the reference? Where is it? Broke it over. Right, like do y'all get why I I added every single one here? Like, do you understand? Yeah, I didn't add something on there. I didn't add the part where how are you feeling this morning? I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add that right now. And I'm gonna tell you guys why I'm adding this in a bit.
cool. So I know Ibrahim already did that. He did that in, in his um, in his journals. He did that in his journal already, which is good. Uh, but do you guys know why I want you to put that? Like, why this matters? Like, genuinely, like, do you know why this matters? Like, why even care to know how you're feeling during your, your trading hours? Like, does, does, like, confidence have something to do with it? Like, if I mean, you're in the right state of, like, state of mind in order to, like, be at your best and, like, to be fully effective during your trading session. Yeah, so, but, like, literally, like, this gets, this gets deep. Um, who, do, do you, does anybody in here watch uh, Uncle Ted? Or do you know who Uncle Ted is? Yeah. Yeah, so he's, like, he owns some, uh, he owns Trader's Domain, which is a brokerage. He's, I mean... I'm not gonna say anything on his style or how much money he makes or whatever, but I, I really I, I I resonate with with who he is as a person and how he carries himself and just the, some of the shit that he says like I just I fuck with it you know, um, he talks a lot about tendencies, not just pretty not pretty much just like tendencies from the market perspective as in what pairs you're trading how it moves when it moves how much it moves etc like tendencies. But there's also tendencies in people like when when you're acknowledging how you feel during your trading hours right and let's say you have a bad day you you're, you're not feeling well whatever or you are feeling well but something happens whatever 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 but then now you're able to pretty much acknowledge the fact that of your own tendencies like whether you're greedy whether your stops are too tight or whether you're not waiting for a BOS or you're not waiting for something, you got to analyze your personal issues, right? And those are connected to how you're initially feeling at the beginning of the session. Like if you come into a session tired as fuck, you're probably going to slack and you're not going to have a good trade for that session, right? So it's important to not just analyze market tendencies. It's also good to acknowledge personal tendencies. Like me personally, my biggest issues over the years or the months that I've seen was patience greed uh what else i'm trying to remember 10 i was greed patience and risk management that was it and the risk management tied hand in hand with the greed aspect like i inferred greed because i was over leveraging right so it's important to notice that and notice those things because now once you acknowledge it, you're able to fix it, right? Without acknowledging it, you don't even know that it's a thing. So without knowing that it's a thing, you can't fix it. So now that you acknowledge it, you can fix it or you can attempt to fix it. But it's it pretty much just falls under the category of just understanding yourself, learning about yourself and how to improve yourself as a person to where it'll then help you on the markets. Right? Like, does that make sense? Or like, am I sounding like, eh? No, yeah, every trader has their own tendencies, bro. Everybody has different tendencies. But the important part is to acknowledge them. Right? For you to learn these concepts, right, you have to be first acknowledge that they exist, you know? Every trader continuously goes through it, bro. It's not it's not something you fully get over. It'll continuously be like there. You just have to keep overcoming it. But yeah, does that make sense? Or like, you wanna you wanna pretty much document every single little thing, like when you take a trade, how you take a trade, how you feel when you take a trade, um, even how you feel after your trade, because it's like, yo, what if what if you're you're feeling greed and you get a 20, 30 to one, but then you're still forcing trades after that, you know? It's also you gotta acknowledge when to stop, like. It's, it goes so, it's so versatile because everybody's so different, which is why I try to character, characterize it in a point or at a, in a way where it's very broad so that it applies to everybody. That's like pretty much the hard part behind 
making these assignments it's trying to make them broad enough for so that i can fully see your your tendencies or that even you can see your own tendencies But yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much done for today. I mean, unless you guys want to talk about something. We've been here for like a good, good hour. Yeah, I guess we're good then.